you can see how it really started, um, and that's the story I'm going to share with you guys today. So when I was three years old, uh, my parents discovered that they were expecting a baby, which was very exciting, I was going to be a big sister. Um, and at their scan, they discovered that their unborn child had a very rare and serious condition called Patel syndrome. So for those of you who don't know what Patel syndrome is, um, it's a very rare chromosomal abnormality um, and it results in a lot of complex organ defects um, for the people who have it. So the chances of babies diagnosed with Patel syndrome in the womb making it up to birth are very low um, and if they do, um, you know, they can live for a couple of hours up to a couple of days after they're born, that's kind of the average, but it's not, like it doesn't look good for, you know, a kind of long-term life. So, um, if you kind of put yourself in my parents' shoes, they had discovered they were having a baby, which in and of itself is a scary thing, you know, having another human being that you're responsible for and have to take care of. Um, and then finding out that this massive, this massive deal, that their child had a disability that they didn't really know much about, they didn't know what that was going to entail. And if you think of how you might feel in that position, you're at a very, very vulnerable state, especially my mum. Um, and at this, their most, well, one of their most vulnerable states, after they've just found this out, um, rather than get the support and the help and the encouragement and the positivity that they need from the healthcare professionals, they were instantly just challenged with, oh, well, why don't you just have an abortion? And, you know, it wasn't on the cards for my parents, um, but I kind of think about this when doing activism and speaking to other people who use disability as a justification for abortion. You can understand why in that circumstance, when there's so much uncertainty, so much doubt, so much, like, fear for the future, for the future of your family and also your child, um, of why they may feel like abortion is a way out in that situation because they're not going to get any help from the professionals um, and lots of other families that I've spoken to who've had children diagnosed with disabilities in the womb um, haven't been given much help either. So anyway, my parents didn't get an abortion, thank goodness, and my baby sister Josephine was born on May the 15th, 2001. Um, she beat the odds, she lived past her life expectancy, she lived till she was almost four years old and she was the happiest, and most joyful, beautiful child I have ever met. Granted, she did have a lot of suffering in her life, she was severely disabled, she couldn't walk, she couldn't talk, she couldn't eat, um, she had a cleft lip and palate, she had six fingers and six toes, which is always really funny when we took her into the shoe shop to get her shoes fit because she had to get custom size ones, the, uh, the shoe people were like, well, <laughs> but um, she was very beautiful in every single way. Um, she sadly passed away uh, just before her fourth birthday on May the 5th, 2005, and I remember at that time, just before I turned seven, but there were hundreds and hundreds of people at her funeral, like the church was completely packed out, and I remember saying to my parents, like, who are all these people? And they said, we don't know, but what we do know is that every single person that's here today has been touched and inspired by Josephine at some point in their lives. And that's really true of people with disabilities, you know. Um, oftentimes the pro-abortion lobby will have you believe that humans' value is based on what they can give to the world, um, and um, that that's, you know, what determines their worth is who fits into their little box of what normal is. Um, but it's really with people who have disabilities where you can see um, the amazing joy that they not only bring to others, and the hope and the encouragement that they bring to others, but also the way that they can show you how to live, even throughout suffering, and still be joyful. And so I think when when I grew up, I kind of got into the when I got into abortion debates, well, discussions with my peers during my teen years. I was horrified at how many people use disability as a justification for all abortion. And my first encounter with this was, I think I was 13, I was at my Irish dancing classes and the girls started talking about abortion. I didn't really know what it was, they kind of briefly explained it, and then one of the girls was like, yeah, well if I ever get pregnant, if my baby has any kind of disability, that would be it. And I was horrified, I was like, hang on a minute, wait, why? Because I always just thought, you know, that, that people with disabilities were just as valuable, they were just as worthy. Um, and it really shocked me, and I said, well, my sister had a disability, what, so, you know, and she goes, yeah, well, I think her parents are really selfish for having her. And I was kind of shocked as well. And I said, so you think that she's just better off dead? She would have been better off dead. And she said, yes. And so from that moment on, I started to think about, you know, why people think that it's okay to justify abortion in the case of disability and the reasons behind it. 
Um, but I think in the case of this, when you're out speaking to people, personal testimony is really important. If you know somebody who has special needs um, or any kind of disability, you can see the impact that they have and speak about them in such a loving way. It's like, why would you, you know, cut their life short just because, again, they're not who you think um, are normal. And quality of life is brought up as, a, as an excuse, again, to have an abortion. But we can never judge anybody else's quality of life um, because the only quality of life we have to measure it against is our own, and that's not really an accurate uh, measure, measuring starting point. Um, so I think that having my sister, being able to speak about my sister in a way that's helped to encourage people to see the beauty and the value of all human beings, regardless of their abilities or disabilities, has been amazing, um, and she's really inspired me to be able to go out and speak to people about this issue. Um, and so what I would say is if anybody does talk to you about disabilities, you can use her as a testimony um, for yourselves. Um, talk about her, even though you didn't know her, but you know her now. <laughs> um, or anybody else in your life who um, may have disabilities, um, that you can you know, just show them that they are still equal, worthy of life, worthy of love, and they are equally valuable and not less valuable than us because of what they can and can't do. So I think that's everything. Anyway, well done for coming. Despite the train strikes.